Hi and welcome to this UiPath tutorial. Today I will talk about how to create a queue and afterwards add items to it. Then I will show you how to get the items from the queue to work with the data. As always, I'll recommend you to have the UiPath open yourself and do the operations as I do them on the screen, since that's the way to learn. You can find both the Excel file and the final project in the description below. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get all the new tutorials about UI, UiPath and RPA that will follow. Likewise, I'll encourage you to leave questions and comments under the video so we can discuss or if you have any um, recommendations uh, what I should make videos of. We need to have three things open. We need the UiPath Studio, which I assume you all got. We need some data. I created some randomly generated data here. We got an idea column, we got a first name, a last name, and a credit ranking. The credit ranking is poor, good, or great. It's just randomly generated. You can find it in the description below the video here. And then we need the orchestrator set up. If you haven't set it up, uh, I'll leave a link for the orchestrator setup guide as well. It's quite easy. I'll, uh, you can do it in like five minutes. So do that if you haven't done it. And otherwise, we'll get started. We will click on the services here in the orchestrator and we will create a queue. So under automations, click queues, click the plus sign add and we could call it uh, a new queue. We will call it just new queue. You could call it anything you want. You can make a description. We could choose if we want unique reference, yes or no. That could be the unique identifier here. We just choose no now and we could specify how many retries we want. We just want three and click add. Now we created this new queue with nothing in it. So let's add something to it. We will head uh, to UiPath and add uh, our Excel sheet to a data table. So first we will drag in a sequence. I'll search for it. I know it's here, but uh, search for it. For some of you it's not. We'll drag that in here, connect it to the start, and we could uh, rename it so it's a bit more easy to create data here. Double click it. And now we need a read range to read the Excel sheet. So read range. You can either choose between the Excel and the workbook. I prefer the workbook because it's more stable. So drag that in. You can choose, feel free to choose the Excel. The path, I placed it in the folder on the desktop. So shift, right click over the file, the Excel file, copy as path and paste it in the workbook path. Here, I'll just choose everything. And we need to output it to a data table. So go to output data table, control K, DT names we'll call it. We could call it anything again here. Now we need to uh, add this uh, each row to a uh, queue item. So yeah, for that we got a fine activity called for each row. And we will take for each row in and that should be the data table we created up here the dt names and then we can uh, do something here and we will add a queue item we'll drag this one in now we need uh, some queue name the queue name was the new queue so copy it or you can remember and the, the queue name here we will uh, click Control K, uh, str, call it Q name, like this, and it's created down here. We could en enter a value to it, and we want to do that because we want the new Q to be uh, to to the one to be added. And now we need to specify what data from the data table we want to add. So let's go with, um, let's look at the data here. Let's go with the idea, maybe a last name and a credit ranking. We could take in the first name as well, but here we won't. So our first one could be the idea. And now we need some .NET code to get the idea from the data table. That's easy, you've seen it before. Otherwise, you've seen it now. Row item, idea, because that was the header of the column here. And then to string, like this. And then we wanted the last name, so we'll just call it name. Row item name. 
string and we should fix this name here because it was last name in the column. And then the final part was the credit ranking. We just call it ranking like this. Row item credit row. Oh, sorry, I spelled so bad. Credit ranking to string. Here, we will click OK. Now we actually uh, created a queue. We could try to run it. Run file. Oh, we need to close down the Excel sheet. Otherwise, yeah. You need when you create a data table, you need to close down the Excel sheet. I uh, did it now. We run the UiPath robot, and now it should have created uh, something in the queue for us. You click refresh here. Um, it will show up as ten remaining here when it comes, but we can go into the three dots here, view transactions. And they are here all 10. So let's take, for example, this one. Click on the three dots, view details. We can see that it stored, um, stored some uh, unique uh, idea here from the transaction. And then we got an idea that was our unique idea. Uh, a name, it's the last name, and the credit score here. We can move back. And we can see that it's now uh, got 10 remaining items in the queue. It's actually a transaction, it's called now. So that was uh, creating the queue. Now, let's say that we want to get uh, the transaction from the queue, like the 10 transactions you see here. How do we do that? Well, it's easy. So let's go to the flow chart again. First, we will need to get a transaction item. So that's an activity. Get transaction item. We'll place it here, and we need something. We need the queue name. So let's go to create data. Double click it, and let's move to add queue item. And into the scope of the str queue name, choose the flow chart here, and then go back. And in the uh, get transaction item, the input should be the str queue name because that's the name of our queue. We'll take the transaction from there and we'll store it in uh, some kinds of a transaction item. We could call it TR item. Oh, control K because that's a new variable, sorry. Like this. And it will be stored in the flowchart. So that's it from here. Now we need to evaluate if the queue is empty. Then we want uh, this process to stop, otherwise move on. So for that, we will drag in a flow decision here. The flow decision, well, that should be, we could call it, when display name will empty it a bit better. It's more easy to find out. So we'll call it MTQ. MTQ, yeah. And now we need something to evaluate on. So click on the three dots. What do we want? We want um, if the TR item, TR item here is nothing, there's nothing left. If that's true, that could be either true or false. So if that's true, then the queue is empty. We want the process to stop. So we will just drag in the message box. Um, in the real world, you will either write a log file or yeah, not a message box. But for our example, it's re really great to have message boxes. So we'll just write queue empty. Have a good day, like this. And otherwise, we want to process uh, that transaction item. So how do we do that? Well, now we um, established that the queue is not empty here, at this moment at least. Just, I like straight arrows. So we want to uh, save the data from the transaction here. And how do we do that? Well, we um, drag in another sequence over here. Move it a bit over here. We will call this one uh, save data. That will save it from the transaction and we'll connect it to the false because that's then the queue is not empty. Double click it and we need uh, some assigns in here. So an assign that uh, again, control K. Now we'll define some new variables 
str id like this enter and we will find it in the whole flow chart like this when we do that and then we will um, get the item from the tr item and for that we need the net specific content that's here and then we wanted the idea like this and then to string so that's it and we drag in another sign because now we want a name and we control k str name enter again number to store it in the whole flow chart tr item specific content then we need the name i think that was the name wasn't it to string let's move back to see what it was it's up here it was here i think it was name yeah it was name so always choose good names for your variables and now we need the ranking so assign str again control k str ranking and we need to get the ranking out of the trenches and again change the scope we need to get out the ranking so tr item specific content ranking to string so now we get all um the variables we wanted from the transaction so um what do we want to do we want to sort out the bad customers that's easy you can do all sorts of old oh, customer flow decision here we want to you can do all sorts of things so we'll after this one we will save the data we will go here and we will uh, call this one bad customer so um the flow decision now we need uh, let's say that the um, str ranking is equal to poor because that was uh, the worst ranking then we will enter and the true otherwise false we at the false we don't do nothing so we'll just go to get a new transaction item here it moves up here well it's a bit uh, it's terrible design but we could move it out here so you'll see and and some but true we want a message to tell us we could uh, in real world we'll use a lock or something but here or stop giving the customer credit here we will uh, move to a message box over here and in that message box we will say that um, the customer Then the name here plus um, the quotation marks and with the ID here plus strd plus quotation marks space is a bad customer. Well, this was our robot like this. We will move up here and then afterwards it will just drag in a new transaction. So now we're done. What this does, it creates some data from the um, Excel sheet. Then we'll uh, add a queue item with the data we wanted. Then we evaluate if the queue is empty. Then it will stop here with a message box. Otherwise, it will go over here. It will save the data from the transaction item. It will, it will evaluate if it's a bad customer. If it's not, then just get the next transaction, transaction item and do nothing. Otherwise, it will move to this message box over here and um, tell us that the customer is a bad customer. So uh, before we all run this, let's just move to the queue and uh, empty uh, the queue. So um, we will um, click view transactions. Just choose all the transactions and remove them so we don't need to process those ones. And now let's run this see that it works we will um, get some message boxes in a moment here we can see the customer Skippy oh we need a space with the ID 3 is a bad customer we could check it oh 
open it, the Excel sheet. So it tells us that uh, first uh, it ran with the, the two ones, nothing happened yet. And the three, the Glenn Gibby, he's a poor customer. As he's a bad customer because he got the credit ranking poor. That's fine. Now we, uh, it will move through some other, uh, the other um, rows, the transaction. The next uh, bad customer is the number six, Rika. And um, she's a bad customer too, that's right. And the next one should be seven, and then the process should end. So click OK. Yeah, that's right. And now it should tell us that the it, your part should tell us that the queue is empty. Click OK. Queue empty. Have a good day. And the process, process ends. So that was it for uh, the UI path queues and transactions. Uh, subscribe if you want uh, the next coming videos about queues and transactions and all the other UI path tutorials coming up. I'll just make them as uh, I'll uh, get the questions from you or uh, from the themes that I want to uh, talk about. That's it for now. Bye bye.